Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 5. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Hello, everyone. Jay Massey here. Glad that you have tuned in for one more episode of the Cash Flow Diary podcast. If you have not already listened to the first episode, make sure you do so so that you understand the format of the show. More importantly, what we have available for you, known as Cash Flow Foundation, it's a free course that teaches you the information on how to never need a job again. Most importantly, how to go out there to create cash flow for yourself and what those most important steps are. There are so many steps necessary inside that process, and I believe that there are one, um, dare I say, at least two that many entrepreneurs skip. And I went through the process of documenting that and making that cash flow foundation course available for you for free so that you can get started on your journey. When you get to the website, you may find that you just need to place your name and info in the list to make sure that you are notified because it may not be up by the time you listen to this particular episode. But if it is great, then you already know what you need to do when you get there. If not, make sure your name's on the list so that we can get in contact with you or just send you a quick email when the courses are completely available, edited and all that other stuff. I'm calling you, or shall I say, talking to you today uh, from the great city of Chicago. I do normally live in uh, Orange County, California, and that's where I typically am broadcasting from. But this particular past weekend, these past four or five days or so, I've been out here in the Chicagoland area helping some investors understand you know, the finer points, if you will, of real estate investing. And it's been an, an absolute amazing time. And I'm also Looking forward in the coming week headed to the Atlanta area uh, to do the exact same thing, just teaching more and helping more individuals understand and how to develop uh, their cash flow and using real estate as the background, but also as business as well. Today, we have a cash flow quote. That quote is simply, though negotiations, okay, let's start that over. Though negotiations are a rough game, you should never allow them to become a dirty game. Once you've agreed to a deal, don't back out of it unless the other party fails to deliver as promised. Your handshake is your bond. As far as I'm concerned, a handshake is worth more than a signed contract. As an entrepreneur, a reputation for your integrity is your most valuable commodity. If you try to put something over on someone, it will come back to haunt you. Who do you think said that? Victor K. Kim. He was an American entrepreneur and probably most popularly known for being the owner of the New England Patriots football team. I just find it interesting that, you know, many entrepreneurs have some of the same things going through the themes of their business, no matter whether you own a football team or whether you own, you know, your own pieces of real estate or whether you own a nail salon. Or, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, is as in the process of developing cash flow, some things are just absolutely necessary. And as you can see from this particular quote, one of those things is integrity, period. Handshake, not a signed contract. A handshake was that important to this particular gentleman. And I understand it. The title of this particular episode is You're Being Lied To. It's uh, three things that you are likely basing your life on that you have no clue uh, are affecting you in in. I just want to share some light on them. Before we get to that, though, uh, I want to make sure that I answer yet another question. Thank you for those of you who are sending in questions or asking me questions when you see me. Uh, I definitely appreciate that. This particular question uh, was, how did you do that first deal? I mean, you for those of you, if you listen to the first episode, you understand the story. But how did you do the first deal with no money, no credit, etc.? And I started out my a real estate career, for those of you who may not know, is as a wholesaler. Basically, you know, you acquire properties at a discount, you sell them at a discount, single family houses. um, And that's how you start. You know, that's how I chose to start. 
And there are two basic concepts necessary to be able to figure that out is that you must understand the difference between owning something and controlling something uh, for wholesaling to work for you. And that's one of the first concepts that I was trained in that helped me to understand, you know, how to be able to transact a wholesale transaction. Because see, in general, with a wholesale transaction, what you're doing is that you are acquiring control of a property. You're not necessarily buying the property, but you're acquiring control of the property in such a way that you have the ability to then sell the control. So step one is to acquire control, and then step two is to sell the control. Once you've sold the control, typically you are done with the deal. That's it. And understanding how to do that is the key. One of the basic concepts is when it comes to you know acquiring or getting control of a property and then selling control is just to understand value. For example, inside of the wholesaling world, you have three basic customers. Sometimes that customer is a retail customer, meaning that they want to live there. Sometimes that customer is a fix and flipper, meaning that they want to add some value to it and flip it real fast for some additional equity in terms of uh, for them. And sometimes your customers just buy and hold. Uh, They're looking for some additional cash flow, etc. And you've got to understand how to describe value to each of those customers because they're all looking for something different. And when you do so, you can then sell your control of that particular piece of property to someone else. That's it. And that's pretty much how I did the first deal. Very specifically, it was a subject to transaction. Or actually, sorry, no. My very first deal was a subject to transaction. Um, The first wholesale transaction was just understanding how to get control over the property. We negotiated some seller financing uh, to help make it easier for the end buyer to actually buy the property. Uh, We had a small down payment. I had a little bit of fee. And then what ends up happening is that the person on the other end, uh, they pay the fee plus the down payment and the closing costs, and they end up with the property and I end up with a small little fee. At that time, it was about $2,000 was the small little fee. And in the first times I was doing, you know, wholesale transactions, you know, it's been said that you can do them quickly. I don't know if you define 72 hours as quickly, but that was typically uh, the situation for myself. And the first time I did it, I did like 11 of them in less than a seven day period. And it was kind of exciting uh, to be able to do that. And so that in, in and of itself is a brief overview on how I began uh, my real estate career using wholesaling as the key to make all those types of things happen. Um, The first part that I want to talk about when I said you're being lied to uh, has to do with a very popular subject these days. It's called retirement and just trying to understand, you know, what that concept is and how it is affecting you. First and foremost, Retirement in and of itself is a relatively new concept. Think about it. It wasn't that long ago before people just died. They didn't really live that long to be able to consider themselves retired, or if they did, they had a very large family, larger family living on a farm or some other type of business, etc. You knew that you had enough kids that would take care of you in your old age. That's kind of how that worked. That's not necessarily the case these days. However, The concept of retirement, I say, is still relatively new. It's less than 100 years old, if you think about it, uh, because it's something that, you know, did not used to exist. There was never the thought process that you would stop working and somehow money would come in and you would be able to use that money to travel around the world and take care of you and all these types of things. Uh, These options just were not available. So this is a relatively new concept for the population as a whole, in my opinion. And I think we're still trying to get a hold on uh, a handle on it on how to make it happen. And here's the fundamental challenge that I have with the way that, you know, retirement is taught these days. Uh, We're taught that you have to go out there and save a whole big pile of cash. Okay, so let me give you some numerical examples. Let's just say that for the sake of this discussion, you say to yourself, you know what, what I would love to do is I'd love to be able to have enough money come in that covers all of my expenses without having to work. That's the definition of retirement we're going to use. So if you can do that, does that require a pile of money? Well, what's typically taught, you know, having been a financial planner myself, what's typically taught is, you know, you got to save, you know, $500, $1,000, $2,000, $2,500 a month. So so that you reach some, you know, large number, let's call it a million, two million, or $3.4 million. You got to reach some large number. And that large number, which is 
dependent upon, how large your number is dependent upon two things. One, the level of lifestyle you plan to use or live. Uh, Two, uh, the amount of interest rate that you believe you are able to obtain uh, on that pile of cash. And I guess it's actually dependent on three things or kind of four, the whole thing of inflation and taxes as well, how you're going to manage that. You got to manage these variables, many of which are completely outside of your control. Uh, And you're trying to make a plan based on that and some pile of cash. So here's the first challenge. We are told, and in fact, there are even commercials these days that say, hey, what's your number? You know, my number is this. And you've got the people on the screen carrying around some, you know, fictitious number under their arm. And they're saying, yeah, my number's, you know, 1 million. My number's 2 million. My number's 3 million. Okay, for the sake of this discussion, let's say that you determine, based upon today's dollar value, what you could do is that you could live on, keywords, live on comfortably $10,000 a month based upon today's dollar value. So you need $10,000 a month coming in without working, and you would then be able to call yourself retired. If you can figure that out, then great. So just continue with this example. What that means is is that an average interest rate of 3.49%, and assuming inflation is also the same, so it matches, and by the way, that we're not including any sort of tax calculation. So right now, tax is zero, okay? So you've got no tax on your income, and you're earning 3.49%, and inflation is also 3.49%. In order to make this situation work, what that means is is that if you plan on living for at least 20 years in this state of retirement, you would need to have $3.4 million at your disposal. $3.4 million would need to be earning at least 3.49% interest. Inflation would need to stay static, and you would have to have no income tax. And then, therefore, for 20 years, you have a shot at earning you know, that particular amount of money on a monthly basis. Well, a couple of challenges with this, in my opinion. The first is that the average American family has no shot at even earning before taxes gross dollar amount of $3.4 million. The second is that inflation isn't going to stay static, and some might even argue that it's actually well above 3.49%. I know I definitely would argue that. And then we always have the pesky income tax issue. So that's a challenge. These are all challenges that we all face. And we put our hope in getting to some particular number. And if we get to that number, then we're done. But the key is, is that that number is not enough. And more importantly, and even worse, is that it's not inflation adjustable, typically with the instruments that we're given or told to use to reach uh, these supposed nirvana. Here's what I think is the solution. We all must become better at using and owning and controlling streams of cash. For example, if you had something, anything that could produce $10,000 a month coming in without you working, you could consider yourself retired, regardless of the amount of money that you have saved up. So what does that mean? That means at the beginning of this month, $10,000 hits your bank account. You spend it, and you can even spend it all. But at the beginning of next month, another $10,000 comes in. You spent all month spending money, and then at the end of the month, another, or at the beginning of the next month, another $10,000 comes in. Could you figure that out? regardless of your bank balance? I think the answer for most people is yes. And if not, do you say $10,000 isn't enough? That's okay. But if you are taught a process, you could take that $10,000 and make it any number of thousands of dollars that you needed per month. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm trying to illustrate a process and an understanding. Well, understanding that, that means you agree with me. A stream of income is what's necessary regardless of your bank balance. That's the key. We're often taught, and here's the key right here, we're often taught that we have to own something when the truth is is it's better for us to control it. Many people, myself, I'm not one of these people. I I wasn't gifted uh, with this whole bit of musical ability to create songs that could play on the radio. But think about those individuals just for a small second. Once they've created, I'm going to call that intellectual property and that intellectual property continually plays and plays and plays and plays over and over and over again they continue to receive some form of compensation for that they have some ownership and or control inside 
uh, that particular asset. But, well, what happens when the person who created it goes away? Well, that control of the asset passes to someone else. And when that control of the asset still passes to someone else, now they're the one who gets paid. And my challenge is that most of us, we weren't taught between kindergarten and 12th grade how to control an asset so that we can continually get paid. And actually then with that income, finally go do something that really matters, whatever that might be. You know, for each person, what really matters to them is something completely different. And, but some people get to do that. It's just that you and I often aren't taught and often aren't the ones who get to do it. And this is the first lie. We're told that we have to save, you know, some really, really large amount of number. We're told that we have to, that we have to work hard and get a second job or a third job or something of that nature to try to save and live below the means. I'm not advocating that you spend more than you earn. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that we're taught ideas on what to do with the money that currently don't fit the economic situation that most of us find ourselves in. Just a thought, just an idea I cement for your acceptance. Okay, let's go over to our cash flow question from last week. Last week, the question was, what do the letters CCR and ROI usually mean? What do the letters CCR and ROI usually mean? Well, some of you got it right. You know that those letters mean cash on cash return or return on investment. It's simply a measure of the actual dollars in and dollars out. It's a ratio. How many dollars out did you get compared to the dollars that you actually put in over a 12-month period? What was that? The physical dollars received in that percentage or that ratio multiplied by 100 gives you a percentage of your return on investment or cash on cash return. This week's question designed to increase your financial knowledge is, what is the term many real estate investors use when describing their mortgage payment? There's a specific term that I'm looking for that real estate investors tend to use when describing their mortgage payment. It's two words, for those of you wondering, um, and it's a very specific term that's usually used when describing their mortgage payment. Okay, that's our cash flow question. Let us continue with our main topic. Here's another thing, just another thing uh, that I want to submit to you that I think is interesting. Uh, And dare I say you're being lied to in this one as well. Because we're told to go to school, get good grades, and get a job. You've heard that one before, right? Uh, We're told that that job is supposed to take care of us and supposed to set us up for the future. Uh, The question is, is who's who's future. We were never told that part, Um, but it is supposed to set us up for the future. Uh, We're supposed to earn, you know, spend less than we earn, buy our, you know, white house or or, sorry, a house with a two picket fence and have two and a half kids, etc. And go on about our merry way. And when it's all said and done, yay, things will be there uh, for us. Uh, Traditional education. (laughs) And here's the lie. The traditional education system is not designed It's not by design there to make you wealthy. It's not in any way. It's not designed for your best interest or best benefit all the time. Uh, We must learn to take more responsibility, therefore, dare I say, self-education. That's one of the reasons I love podcasts and uh, the fact that we have this, we'll call it free media exchange, where it's uncensored. You just have the ability to... You know, if you're bold enough to go out there and say something and post it online, you can, and hopefully people will listen. And if not, no big deal. At least you did your part. Uh, So we've got a whole lot more self-education. See, a job, you know, you can live, but self-education can help you create and make a fortune, uh, earn it, own it, protect it, etc., and that's where podcasts like The Cashflow Diary come from. That's where the website, cashflowdiary.com, comes from. All of these things are things uh, that are there and designed to help you know individuals begin that journey and create and sustain uh, the thought processes and everything else that's there to, to make it happen. Traditional education ends up in a job. Self-education ends up with a fortune. See, profits are better than wages. Profits are better than wages. Oftentimes when individuals, I know myself, I went through this, I can remember thinking, man, if I, if I let go of this job, how can I have a quote unquote steady paycheck, right? You remember those words, steady paycheck? Some of us have found out recently that our paychecks still aren't steady, right? And here's what I'm going to say. The only reason your income in your business isn't steady because, is because you are not steady. 
If you put forth consistent effort in your business and you offer something that's of value, your income will be steady. It produces ratios. You'll be able to do things and understand them predictably once you do that. For example, if you know, you know, no matter how many, let's say, you know, how many times you're out there prospecting or how many times you have, you know, units, say you have, you know, 10 or 15, you know, rental properties, right? You know, over the course of a year, there's a certain percentage of them that's going to produce some vacancy. Well, that vacancy is a number that you can get used to understanding. And then once you get used to understanding, so long as you continue to consistently enforce quality control measures, what you end up with is a predictable stream of income, a baseline and a top line. And you've got, you know, some delta in between. You could say, hey, predictably, I know that this much is least will come in. At least, you know, barring some huge natural disaster or something of that nature, you can do that. And you can then, therefore, produce consistent returns. Well, all right, maybe it's not real estate. Maybe it's your own personal business. You can say, well, if I do this many prospecting calls, if I do this many presentations, if I invite this many investors into my deal, or if I look at or write this many offers, or if I uh, fix and flip this many houses, or if I sell this many units, you get the idea where I'm going. At some point, so long as you stay consistent, you have the ability to have consistent income. And then as you grow, what you do is you develop systems around the things that you would need to do so that you physically don't have to continue to do them. And then that even makes your business more consistent because now it's a system that's dependent on more than just you. This is part of the process and part of the reason uh, why the Cashflow Foundation course was created is to help you begin to put that system in place to help you begin to put that system in place so that you could use it to develop any sort of business that you wanted to. Remember, profits are better than wages. I believe it was the late, great Jim Rohn who taught me that one. Here's another one that I find that's interesting, is that through the process of traditional education, we're told to wait your turn, wait your turn. Could you imagine if there was a, I'm just going to make something up, say there was 100 uh, single-family houses available, there were no money down, and the loans were free. You could, uh, so you, you didn't have to worry about credit. You didn't have to worry about anything. Uh, and there's like 200 people all there. What on earth means or says that you have to wait your turn? That doesn't mean some people don't get any. What ends up happening is that some people get more than others because they're not waiting their turn. They're not waiting or saying, oh, please, by all means, you go first. Uh, I find it interesting. Now, I'm not saying I'm not advocating any sort of anarchy, but what I am saying is we don't have to necessarily wait your turn or more importantly, wait for permission to finally become the individuals that you know you are inside. What are you waiting on? You do, you, do you need a blessing? Do you, do you need someone to say, okay, now you can go be your best self? Okay, here we go. Are you ready? You can now go be your best self. <laughs> what I want you to do is spend the rest of today introducing your new self, introducing your new self to all of your same friends so that they can get to know this new you, all right? But this new you, it doesn't wait. Uh, it takes action. It moves at the speed of instruction, and it makes sure that things happen in such a way that they are a benefit for everybody. Once you've done one deal, you do a second. Once you've had, acquired one customer, you go get a second. You don't have to wait. You, you go as, you, and help as many people as you possibly can as quickly. Here's another piece. Uh, going through the traditional education system, you also learn, hey, don't make mistakes. In fact, you're rewarded for not making mistakes. And the first thing that's going to happen to you when you start a business is you're going to make a mistake. And in school, when you made a mistake, you got an F and you were told, ooh, don't do that. Uh, In fact, you were rewarded. The less mistakes you made, the better your grade, period. You weren't rewarded for taking risks or even applying your intuition in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, you just did it the way everyone else did it. And since it worked and they got a good grade and didn't get in trouble, I will strive to do that. And if you couldn't make it or couldn't hack it, you were somehow called a failure, which doesn't feel good. What's interesting, though, is that when you go down the self-education path, one of the things that makes you valuable is your willingness to make mistakes. 
you know, there have been transactions out there where I've lost money. And some of those transactions, I, I that's when I've learned the most. That's when I've understood more. That's when I was like, oh, that's what that means. I didn't understand that that was important. And one lesson I learned from that that I will share with you is that one of my investors specifically said to me, and I was, I was floored because it, you know, it was a couple years ago, and I was like, wow, I can't believe the way he thinks. He said, you know what? I, I would invest with you again because now you're a safer bet. I wasn't thinking that way. I was thinking, oh my God, I made a mistake. Did you not hear what I just said? I mean, all this stuff went wrong. And in his perspective was, nah, you're safer. You won't do that twice. I was like, you're definitely right about that. Definitely right about that. So just some ideas, some ideas that I wanted to submit to you so that you could see, you know, various ways that I felt that, you know, we're lied to. Because in that process of being lied to, we base our life on these things. We base our life centered around these principles and these concepts that somehow we're, we're, we're supposed to build a stable life upon, and, but we can't. Simply because we're in a situation to where we're laboring under the wrong kind of knowledge. We have no clue. We're laboring under the wrong kind of knowledge. And we need to learn how to labor under correct knowledge. Labor under correct knowledge. We're developing your luck. If you look at the first letters of what I just said, you'll understand what I mean. We're developing your luck. And the more I labor under correct knowledge, the luckier I get. So final comment today, just remember this. What you don't know can, is, and always has hurt you. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.